So what is it all about? It's, it's basically, it's about building a bridge, building a solid bridge from the emotional world in which our young children live with their own maths understanding, which they already have, to bridge this with that formal and abstract language of math that we decide, uh, develop as a very neat fancy language to describe our world. Because that's what maths is in the end. If you think about it, it is a language to describe all sort of stuff. And we not only need it in our, da in our daily life, it's also a major subject, especially in year one. Math, reading, writing, I suppose that's everywhere in the world. Those are the subjects that the focus is on. And if you imagine how proud our children are when they enter school. Now I'm a school kid. Now I want to do well. I want to please my teacher. I want to cope with the tasks given. Imagine what it is for the children that we enable them that they come into school equipped with everything they need. A math knowledge, sure, but also all those other skills like concentration, emotional skills, creativity, listening, maybe this is all this language, obviously. So it's all this, and uh, my little concept here looks at all these things as well. Now imagine if a child does well, this in year one, also with math. Yes, this is so important for my self-esteem. I'm motivated to learn more. And uh, also vice versa, if you don't do well, it's really so, you know, devastating. Okay. Um, so um, let us start. I have all my paper here in front of me, jumping around. So let's have this, let's start with what children need to know. So I, I brought this little magnetic whiteboard. It's actually the first time I'm using it and I hope it's working well. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's about the basic numbers that we really need to focus on because our longitudinal studies show that it's crucial that children in the early years get a real understanding of anything, everything around them. So first of all, we would also include zero. Now, what do they need to know about the numbers? It's not reciting one, two, three, and stuff like that. And it's about, it's, it's about manyness, that's true, but it's not about counting one, two, three, four, and then if, um, it's about seeing quantities. It's about, uh-huh, uh, this is four. And, um, oh, these are five. These are also five, right? And I can pinpoint it. And, and this, so it doesn't matter what it consists of. It could also be five of these little bricks. It's also five. Then we want them to see the quantities. Um, and then obviously also to know that this quantity it's called five, and this is how a five looks like. We want them to know that four, this is four, and that five, and that five is one more than four. So that numbers have a specific order. This is also important for them to know. It's important for them to know that you can split a number that a four can be made, made up, up of other numbers as well. Like, so that four could be two and two, or two and one and one, it's still four. This is what we want them to know. It may, may, maybe it doesn't seem very special for you, but if you think about it, also in daily life, always talk about uh, how many plates are there on the dinner table? How many plates do I need? And if I need four of them, or how many do I already have? How many more do I know, do I do I need? So we want them to see to, to see quantities. Later on, we would want them kind of ten frame. We want them to see numbers. We want them to see numbers like this, like that. This is a four. That we want them to have an inner picture of a four like this, or a four like that, and to know that it makes it's four and there's six more to make it 10, right? Uh, because our number system is based on 10. So we want them to know, to, to grow into, okay, four and six more to make it 10. 
And um, if I have an entire 10 full, like this, right? that we can then say, okay, this is a full 10, the next 10 is still empty, or maybe in the next 10, there's one. So here we are cal we're calculating seven plus four. So that makes one full 10 and one of the next one. So we would, this, the way we would, uh, let, let, me, let me make it like this. Um, so it's, it's a one 10, and two of this, so we write it well. See, one full 10 and two elements of the next 10. This is what they, what they need to, 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 to do, that what they will be growing into over time. That's a far goal. It's nothing for the four-year-olds. But this is what they should really, um, this is quite uh, up today's knowledge, this is really what they, what you want them to see. We want them to see, to have inner pictures. Ah, oh, yeah, this is a, if I want to calculate seven plus five, forgive me if this is just blue, I'm missing my, my pink. Um, if I want to calculate seven, seven and five, I want that we want them to see, ah, uh -huh, seven, that's this, this amount and this go, uh, and plus that amount. So I have a full tenny and, and that's, that's the next one. So this is the far, uh, expert goal that we want to achieve. And um, so that children will be able to really calculate beyond 10. Um, so, and so the ability to, to grasp an amount at a glance, this is called subitizing, like Italian subito, which means like in an instant at a, oops, <laughs> there goes my, Okay, have to work on that. Um, we want we want them to see this at a at a glance and know. Ah, oh yeah, this is five. Okay, we please remember that. Um, <laughs> now, how do we get our little ones over to learn this? This means that we need to look at look at how do children learn? What are they like? Because the thing is. Whatever we learn, be it as, as a child or also as, a, as an adult, we always build on what is already there. It's built on what we know already and the experience we've made, how we feel about something. Do I like to, to deal with math? Do I like to draw things? Do I like to, to, to do sports? Do I like this? And the more I like it, the more I will be willing to, um, to learn or to, to, to acquire something new or to to, to, to be active with it. So we always build on what is there. And, um, and also like our, the, the bridge that we want to build from here, from the, 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 the child over to that formal language of math, that bridge also needs a solid foundation. So let's look at what the children, what the children know, what um, experiences they have, and we want what inner pictures they have those emotions that they have. So what, 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 what do they do? They, um, they live in a very emotional world, the children. For the children, everything is alive when they are young. The, the plush toy is alive. Uh, even a table is alive. Everything is alive and has intentions. And they are very much black and white and good versus bad. That is something that really very much um, Keeps, keeps them keeps them busy busy um, they want to touch things they want to run around and they live in this kind of magic world they also already have some inborn understanding they can see quantities like one or two and they can say this see this is one more than that one and and then it becomes many also animals have this capacity this is what our brain was built for to be decided to, to be able to decide oh does, does that one over there or that group over there do they outnumber me is could that be potentially dangerous it's kind of a life skill so they have this inborn understanding of one too many um, on this side of the bridge and they live in this emotional world so again the question how do we get them over there um, well, what we do is put it aside for a second. It's 
basically an easy idea. What we do say is those abstract symbols that we are using all the time, we turn them into an, a happening, into, a, a med, in an, into an emotional happening. We say, you know, just uh, the numbers are alive, just like you, they also live somewhere. They have a home, a home that we call Numberland. So number one is not just an abstract symbol, it's, an, it's a character, it's an individual character, such as that number two, she, in this, in this case, has two feathers. You know, it doesn't mean, does, they don't have to look like this, they can look uh, whatever you, you, you make them. So, and number three has a funny head, number four, for example, has these beautiful four braids, and then we have this big belly five, for example, see all individuals, all nice little characters, that the children can play with, talk to, because role play, pretend play, that's something that they really, really, really enjoy. And see, I need to tell them, I can talk to each other and we can visit each other. Um, this is, oh, and we also have a little zero, because also zero is an important number and is part of the number. So, um, I wanted to show them to you in, so that you could spot the details, that you can spot they are individuals who live somewhere because here on the board it's a little bit small. But um, so now, when, what we do together with the children, we look at, okay, if the numbers have a home like you and us, this is something that goes to the children, to a child, how could this home look like? Well, we, will, we can visit one number after the other and then get to know every, or explore everything around that number that we like, that could, that's inter interesting or that occurs to us. But to give you uh, an idea of how the structure will be, be in the end, number four has a house with four windows, where again, we have the amount, the quantity, but organized as on a dice. Number four's neighbor is number five. See, we don't speak of predecessor or the successor, we have neighbors. And you see, again, the quantity is organized and on number six house, um, it's, it's, the, the principle changes. So it will be five plus one, like we have five fingers on each hand. Um, and this is supposed to help the children with the subitizing thingy that they can, that we help them with, by organizing like this, um, but it's more. And here we split, we, we indicate that the number can be split, obviously not only that way, but also in other ways, but you always start somewhere and then you move on. So these would be the neighbors of four, five and six. And here we put, we put our numbers into their, or next to their houses. So the children can can find the character and, and build, a, build, a, build the houses for them. And um, then, of course, they like to have a garden. So number four's garden, it's not just a garden, it's a square. Number five's garden happens to be a pentagon. And number six's garden is a hexagon. And that's a really smart way of introducing shapes. It's not just a square, and this is just not called a square, and this is a pentagon or um, a semicircle, and oh, a circle and a triangle. No, it's not just a shape, it's a garden. It's a garden where a number lives. And then we can look at why is it the garden of that number, right? So it's a completely different thing. And so here, uh, and, and that's and that uh, something children can really, can really enjoy then we can decorate that, these gardens. And that's a super duper thing to do because we find everything we find inside the house, <laughs> doesn't work as well as I thought it would. <laughs> inside everything we, we find inside or outside, we can bring in to decorate the gardens with. And the only principle you will have noticed is it has to match the number. And um, so number four could also have like four little, four trees. It can be one large tree and three small, small trees. And you get the idea of how much we, of how, how much, how, how we look at things now, how the language comes in because we talk about it. 
where we put it, it's next to, it's, it's higher, it's smaller, it's lower, you know, so there's a lot of language, um, a lot of language enclosed. Um, so this is, see here that the children experience it's all different, uh, different items, but it's always for, this is called invariancy, and also that it doesn't matter how it is arranged. So this is a really, really big fun to collect things in. Even, you can even, uh, you can also build towers into the gardens like this, right? So obviously each tower will be one higher. You can put those next to each other and then again talk about it or how you can make one tower out of two other towers. Um, you, can, um, you can also bring in, oh no, hang on. We had talked about the tennis stones. Those we also use and we just call them flower beds. <laughs> so here, Number four, for example, can plant four pink, pink flowers, maybe like this, right? And of course, we need to water them like this, right? So, um, um, so gardening, you know, is a really, really nice thing. Number four may have bought the um, those little those little flowers um, in the garden shop. In the garden center or maybe picked it on a on a meadow which is would be a like 10 by 10 frame and again on this meadow we can we can explore patterns we explore the one flower here to flower here we can mirror we can do all sorts of things with such a meadow in these flower beds we could even grow onions and why not have pebbles from outside as being our onions and because oh look i have one big white onion and a small turned out one onion turned out rather small and brown and i promise you even if you would not um speak if we, even if we don't speak the same language all the children can participate in that because they all understand what's going on here and then can point out and we can develop on that we can develop the language um there's more to it it's not only about quantities big ones small ones it's also about bringing in topics like this one here this sort of cow we can we can talk about and reason well what garden could this little cow graze in if you give it a thought for a second but because of the time, I will give the solution right away. Well, it's only one cow, so it would be entitled to go to number one. It has two ears, so matches number two. Of course, obviously, it's, it's a, a four-legged animal. An animal, it has four legs. That makes it, uh, uh, makes, allows it to into num a number four's garden. I could even say, okay, you know what? I count four legs plus two ears plus two eyes. That makes eight. So we can go to number eight. See, lots and lots of reasoning going, going on here. I can look at a spider in the context of number eight. This is, you know, you can deliberately introduce or um, offer something to look at, like, an, a, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a spider in the context of number eight, or especially um, lovable, of course, are beetles. And uh, in the context of, uh, con context of number six, you can speak about insects because they all have six legs. And then imagine drawing beetles, singing beetles songs, play, um, doing beetles uh, activities, whatever, dances, whatever. Learn about beetles in, in, in the country you live or beetles anywhere else in the world. You see a lot to, um, to bring in general knowledge as well, and again, opportunities opportunities to be creative and stuff like that. Um, I haven't yet talked, or, or it's something like the globe. It's about uniqueness. Our Earth is unique. We only have one world, which is especially uh, up to date topic right now. And as much as the world is unique, every one of us is also unique. A, a topic that children really, really like a lot. Um, I haven't yet spoken, I haven't yet introduced actually the most um, popular character in Numberland, and that is Trickster. Hi, Trickster. Hi, hi, hi. What Trickster does, Trickster and his friend Numberilly, 
they are the good, <laughs> you know, this way. They are the good versus bad. Trickster is the one who turns up ever and again and messes around in number one. So what he, for instance, does, he, he steals something out of a garden. So this is only, see, so this is only two. There's two missing and, um, or maybe something like that, right? Uh, he swaps the gardens, whatever. So this should, uh, he makes mistakes. He's the one who, who, who communicates, you know, mistakes happen, but you can do it. You can solve it. So the children can spot the mistakes, correct them, and that's, that makes them really, really proud. And if they like, they can call Number Relief really for help to help them. So the, the message is mistakes happen. It's completely normal. They happen all the time. You can dare make mistakes. It's OK. But at the end of the day, everything will be OK again. So as I said, Trickster, whether it looks like this or, or different, doesn't matter at all. It's the idea of having these characters. They can even stay invisible. Um, so this is um, this is an, an as you see very quickly. This is uh, just to give you a very short idea of how number the idea of turning numbers, abstract symbols, into something living, into something into something living and uh, lovable. How, how this opens and, and giving them a home, how much this uh, translates this math into the world of children, because this is something they can relate to. This is something that means, them, means something to them. They can play here, they can, they can um, I mean, you can also make everything yourself. There's also so much, so beautiful. Uh, it's the idea that works so nicely. And uh, this is something that children just like to engage. You can really engage all your children with this. And uh, as I said earlier, I hope, um, even if you have children with different languages, all the children can engage you, participate and have their success. And uh, so it's highly inclusive and uh, integrative. We have very, very good experiences with this, also not only to provide that ever so important foundation, but also it's about concentrating, communicating, interacting, and you can relate to creative, to active games, to motor skills, and whatever is important for you. You can also adjust it to the needs you have with very good uh, experiences, also with special educational needs. Um, so it's, it's, it's a powerful tool, and also the psychological um, aspect of it, I think I would like to close with that, is that here for children, um, they see they have something that is clear. It's a clear structure. And they, there's something that you can rely on. The order of the number is always the same. The um, four is always four, no matter what, right? So this is some, this is uh, um, um, a psychological aspect that is really, really, uh, yeah, some 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 important side effect, I would say. So, looking at that, I think I, I gave you an, a, a quick idea. You can bring in stories here. You can bring in songs, make up your own songs, your own stories. We have those in German, but they don't really work particularly well. Universal, and as much as maths is the global language, uh, stories and songs are very much a cultural thing. So. Uh, it should be always adapted, uh, adapted to the culture. But this is something I can, an idea I would like to offer to you to explore, um, to explore such a place where the numbers could live. And um, if you like, obviously, I offer these resources as a PDF files, a PDF file in large, large like this, and in small like that. There is major variations, so you can see those on my, uh, find them on my website. And um, so what I do is really, I love this so much. And the experience, uh, experience with it is so beautiful, especially because you can link it to so many things. Um, I hope you see it as well like that, that I hope to make a contribution with this for children to also to have a happy childhood, to be the child that they want to be, but at the same time also get really that structured uh, and thorough knowledge that they just simply need. But you can spice it up basically with everything that you like. And um, so I'm, 
I'm really, really happy that I had the opportunity, had the opportunity to, to show this to you. And I more, would be more than happy to connect with any one of you uh, and to see how, how this could possibly also be um, a supplement for you, but also obviously uh, also just to develop further and further improve this as well. So this would be, now, would be everything I would, I would like to, wanted to bring across today. Um, and yeah, so I close this. And uh, from what I understand, Anusha, now it's a Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for the amazing interactive storytelling session. And that was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your effort. And we do have a question from Anish B. And he says, would it be better to link the number with the color of the buttons might help build association in a child's brain. Sure, I mean you can you can you can go about it um, the, the the best you think. I mean the Montessori approach is also to um, to link certain colors to, um, to to numbers. I brought I even brought some. Ah, I, I think I've forgotten them in the presentation. Little number worms because in those gardens that are so well kept. You can also have little worms, um, and here are some like the Montessori ones. And they again, you can see the, the, the amount, and you can kind of split to two, three, and one. And Montessori has these colors, so maybe you you think of something like that. I mean, you can do this, but you could also you could also um, just use only one color uh, to reduce the cognitive load in the in, in the first place, so that. It's only one, yeah, like the, the little red brick uh, block, one, one red, two red blocks, three red blocks, you know, so that the cognitive load is reduced. Um, I hear different opinions on that, uh, really de apparently depending on the children, but this is something that you could really um, decide for yourself and, 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 and the way you judge it. Um, uh, my experience is no, no one is the same, no child is the same. I mean, we all come with different uh, experiences and uh, bra different brains and every, all this. Uh, but it's a valuable thought, you could, so you can do this like this as well. There's Thank no you. Right. Thank you, Barbara. I hope, I hope she answers your questions, Anish. If you could unmute yourself. Uh, Absolutely, Barbara. First of all, I love your energy. I love your smile. And the way you are explaining this, it just shows that you are in so much love with this concept. So thank you very much. Um, that was just my suggestion that, you know, is it is it also okay to link the colors slowly and gradually to the mind of a child? Um, but I think you, you rightly said that just showcasing one color initially and then gradually building on that. So yeah, thank you very much. I really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thank you Maybe I should I should um, should 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 say that you know really depending on the children you have, their age and also their capacities or whatever, um, their level maybe you can you can you can decide on how how what you do, what you how much you include, and how far you go. So the younger the children, obviously, the less you will do. And the older or more experienced the children, the faster you, you can go. Uh, you know, so it's all up to you, basically. And I would love to, to hear about how some of you would go about it. Yeah. Yeah, um, thank would, you. Actually, if you like, thanks. In the chat, I can put in my, my website. I think you will have yes. it. But I can put it in the, in the chat anyway, so that you have it here too, right? I can do thank this. You. And thank you, guys. Oh. Also, we have questions from Sita. Sita questions. Have you written in detail about your teaching concept in your book? Um, well, the book that is out that Anusha mentioned in the beginning, that is, a, is in German only. Um, but there have been various articles in English that are available where you can uh, read about the details of the thinking. And I'm currently redoing, revamping my website. So I intend to include more background information on that website as well. Um, I have to ask you for a little bit of patience because I'm doing everything by myself. Uh, and now I just found um, another dedicated teacher um, who is helping me improving it. Um, 
uh, Bark Hansen. I think he's also here. He and I met him over the Educational Influence Network. So I think why not saying this? Yes, as, as you, so you see how much uh, how powerful this network is. So long story short, on the website I list various publications where you can read more about the background of it, and there's also a translation of the original research paper because the uh, the concept was. Uh, for first uh, developed by uh, Gerhard Friedrich, and uh, it was uh, it was published in a peer-reviewed journal, uh, and we translated it into English. So if you were on the more on the research side, I can also make this available on the website. I have to I think it's already there, but as I said, it's all <laughs> about uh, improving things. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much. No, but so, but you can also always, always contact me directly, and uh, and I am I'm, I'm very much interested in that. And also, we do have questions from Mona, who's tuning in from United Arab Emirates. He asks, where can we get these magnetic ones, or have we have to create these? Ah, I'm glad you asked this. <laughs> On my website, I make I make them available as a as a PDF. Uh, so basically, they look. They look like this. You can you can buy this PDF from my website. So it looks like this. You can cut it. So you could also do it in a 3D version like this, right? But you can also cut it and laminate it, or put it put the glue it on a box. So you can you can get it from me and then print it out. I thought um, doing it as a PDF is the most is the best way to make it available. And we we also I also wanted to look it a little, little bit artsy. So. A friend of mine, she paints acrylic and acrylic technique. So I was she allowed me to copy to to, to photograph to photograph her, some of her paintings and I use them as a background. <laughs> so this you can get, and uh, you can also download um, a free something like this for free. So there you can design your houses yourselves. So you can just download this from the website, and there's also. Um, a book of numbers, which is again uh, printouts you could use for something like it includes this, you know, coloring pages and lots of lots of other stuff. Thanks, yeah. Barbara. And we have, we have a beautiful two girls, Macy and Fliss, tuning in all the way from Netherlands. And she has a mom, Rebecca, with them. And she has a question. When a child starts counting all the time and identifying numbers everywhere, how is it best to build on this and encourage more learning as a parent of that child? She's four years old. Well, if, if she's, uh, that's beautiful. If, if the child shows interest, it means that the window is open. All the children open their windows at different times. So if, if, if she's discovering numbers everywhere, just enjoy seeing numbers, start uh, count them just as, as we did. Say, uh, let, or, or, or find, ah, oh, yeah, this, oh, there are four flowers. Oh, it's, um, and how many petals do the flowers have? You know, you can spot so much, especially um, outside. Uh, just, just enjoy this and maybe get the Numberland results. And, uh, and 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 elaborate on that maybe. Thank you, thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you for your amazing sessions. Thank you for your questions, everybody.